Hey guys, it's Dor. I got Coach with me today. And in this video, we're gonna be going over AR furniture, okay? Where it began, very humble beginnings, uh, starting off with the M16 series as it rolled out all the way into the present. Yeah, we're gonna roll through just the evolution of how everything uh, came to be and then kind of touch on just the nearly unlimited amount of options you have today. All right, so stay tuned. And today's video is brought to you by Dry Fire Mag. Now, when you have a striker fired pistol, you get one squeeze and then nothing. You gotta reset the, the striker, right? And that can lead into some bad range habits. So if you get yourself a Dry Fire Mag, get it in there the right way, you load it in there, and then that first squeeze, give you that, that reset. It's not a true trigger squeeze, but you can actually adjust these so the weight is, a, is slightly different and closer to your carry gun. So check them out. Uh, if you use promo code TACHIVE, you get 10 bucks off. All right, all right guys, so we're back. Got Coach here, and today it's all about the furniture, the pistol grips, the foregrips, the forends, the buttstocks. For many, many years, you just got what you got, and that was what came off the factory assembly line. Yeah. But... Capitalism found a way, and we'll get into that. But to start things off, obviously we'll cover the beginning. We have a uh, M16A1 clone with mil spec, probably but made by Colt, all furniture. Yeah, that, the, the upper and the furniture that came as a kit. So this is all 1970s vintage uh, stuff. Um, it's it made out of a kind of a fiberglass, you know, mm -hmm. concoction. Like a light kind of thing? Yeah, it, it, it's not like the new polymer stuff. Uh, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's more fragile. Um, and that was one of the biggest controversies to the M16A1 to start with, is it wasn't made of wood. wood yeah. It wasn't wood and iron. They like, called it uh, the Mattel rifle. And Mattel did come out with their own toy version of the M16. Yeah, the Marauder, man. Yeah. I had one. They yeah. were awesome. Awesome. Outstanding. <laughs> had that giant noise box magazine. Damn right. That was the deal. Good stuff. Um, but yeah, so, but it, from a supply standpoint, they had to have the right and left side foregrip. Yeah. And if you broke one, you had to wait till you found. Yeah, to get another one replaced. Yeah, that, so it was kind of a nightmare. Line. And they figured that out pretty quickly because the car 15s by the mid to late 60s were being issued with the top bottom configuration. Yeah, yeah the, the shorty one. Uh, I think this uh, the Colt Commando, some of the short, you know, mm -hmm. experimental ones just cut down versions of yeah, that. Yeah, the very, the very first like version of a car 15 did have the like, yeah, super short cut down version of these, but that did not last very long. Yeah. Once the X and 177 started coming out, you saw the, the first example of the top bottom circular handguards. The first ones were pretty skinny and they had uh, six holes on them. Mm -hmm. They weren't fully vented. And then eventually, you know, a few decades right. later, yeah, they came out with the double heat shield, which is the one we know today, which is a um, much thicker, girthier. But nobody uses them. Yeah, nobody uses them anymore. Nobody uses them. And we moved on. You know, yeah, that showed up just about the right time for us to move on to the, uh, mm -hmm. the rail system. Right, but as far as these um, top bottom, so now they're exactly the same. They go either on the top or the bottom, but it's one piece for manufacturing. They're all shipped together. It doesn't matter which one goes on top, which one goes on bottom, which made life a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Um, and these shipped with the M16A2 in the 80s. And then I noticed that starting in the 80s and then kind of moving on through the 90s, um, not so much in our military because we were completely going over to the 700 series with the, mm -hmm. the different barrel, but other countries were just buying these and putting them on their M16A1s. Very popular in the Philippines, um, among other places, because... Yeah, these things just, the originals just weren't built to last. They wore out. It was funny because, uh, like, okay, so these short ones are made to go on a little round, the little uh, end cap here, right? It's round. These bigger ones are meant to go on a triangular end cap. So this one still has a triangular end cap a la M16A1. 
So there was that backwards compatibility for the full-size gun, yeah. um, but not for the uh, the uh, the car 15, the right the shorter, the carbine, I should say. Yeah. So this made life a lot easier. Um, top, bottom didn't matter, and it basically, I think you can still buy certain certain companies are still selling rifles with the original. Yeah, you can. You know, your your base model stuff comes with this kind of thing mm -hmm. on it. Uh, no, one thing I really liked about because I, uh, I started my career with the M16A1 mm -hmm. uh, in buds. Uh, something about this because it's this triangular um, that it's graduated and triangular, so it gets bigger towards the back. You can grab onto this and kind of pull towards you, right? And has a little bit, like, get a little more grasp on it. Whereas, you know, and there's no no ribs or anything. But this one here is pretty much. The same size all the way down, just kind of grabbing this round tube. And I never really liked that much. Some guys, you know, thought it was okay. Uh, but luckily, by the time, uh, I didn't, didn't have a lot of time on anything like this, uh, we moved on to the, uh, the rail systems. As things continue to progress, um, you know, this is a, your car clone from work. Let's, I mean, talk about this, so what, what's going on with this? You know, you guys had this, this done custom yeah okay so I, this is kind of running as my my second gun not my house gun but we had this uh you know same gear we hadn't moved on to the rail just yet so we had this thing here got we have our uh, comms guys we're real good with electronics so they'd wire things up you know this is initially you couldn't get an on off switch it was always a pressure pad i liked on off switches we didn't know any better so we just clamped uh lights to the uh to the barrel. So you're going with just an A1 but, yeah. uh, pistol grip? A1 pistol grip, because that's that's what was laying around in the, the, the gunsmith's mm -hmm. drawers. And then uh, back here, uh, so this one is a, a plastic version. One's the first, uh, the plastic ones for the Car 15. The ones prior to this were made of aluminum. And nowadays they go for like 300 bucks a pop, if you can find them, you know, when you know, somebody's uh, selling them on eBay or whatever. But, and I threw away probably a dozen of those while I was working in the armory because they were heavier. Yeah. This was lighter, plastic, whatever. They were new old, not old old. Yeah. Not cool old. Yeah. They, they were, were just, the recently they were just old. old. They were just old. They were the recently this old. Is, this is the new. Yeah, it wasn't, yeah. Uh, wasn't cool yet. Um, and then this particular one I hooked up with a little uh, quick release. So when we went low vis, I actually had a, uh, an even shorter version of this. Uh, you could fold it up and then have like a shoulder harness and this would hook into it so you could wear under a coat. You know, it was fairly obvious, but a little mm -hmm. bit more uh, low profile. But yeah, so I, that came with me when I left. But yeah, so that's the, that was that kind of the state of things. Um, and then oh, around 95, uh, after Green Team, we started moving into uh, the, the rail systems. Right on. Yeah. That's kind of where I started. My first M4 had a rail on it already. Completely yeah. slick, nothing on it. Oh yeah. But, uh, so let's stick with the four ends first. So yeah, this uh, there's been a couple different iterations of these, but man, when it came in, it was like, it was the best thing ever. Cause all of a sudden you didn't have to tape stuff on and you know, do all this silly modification crap. You weren't bolting lights to the barrel. You know, you could just latch these on and uh, and configure the uh, the weapon um, how you wanted it. Um, it just made a lot of sense. Uh, some of these you could lock on pretty good. They had different locking mechanisms and little little minor differences. But uh, Knight's Armor KAC, they uh, they came out with this thing and and it's been uh, going gangbusters ever since. Yeah, this is the original uh, buttstock that M4 shipped with. They work just fine, nothing wrong with them, but for whatever reason, it wasn't enough. So I think oh, well, the, yeah. the first two kind of big furniture changes that we, as we got into the GWAT era was the LMT Lewis Machine Tool buttstock mm -hmm. and then this Gen 1 <laughs> rinky-dink little Reed Knight foregrip that, I mean, I never used them, but they were around. Yeah, when you're talking uh, special operations modification, peculiar modification, special mm -hmm. operations, peculiar modifications, SOP mod. Um, this was the first one that came out with, and it, it is, uh, it's, it's pretty flimsy. It, you know, it, it worked for what it was, 
but man uh, you, you bash somebody with that or you know mm -hmm. you, you could uh you could snap that off pretty easy or if it held on here it might take this whole thing with it so uh yeah. there was some evolutionary uh things that that uh yeah you, know, you, you give a frogman something that the coolest piece of equipment in the world he's gonna break it straight away he's gonna break it he'll show you wherever you didn't test right it'll get broken it's, it's not uh it's like being a sailor and soldier proof mm -hmm. on steroids because we tend to beat up our gear pretty good uh, yeah but so we yeah we started with this bake light stuff on a solid um stock the m16a2 has slightly longer stock and then uh it wasn't it was uh, yeah so this one here was your next stock for the uh for the collapsible and then all the enforced came out of the box with this one yeah and, they and were, then they got sop modified and uh that was the first uh yeah pretty much the, the four end rail with this grip this buttstock were pretty much standard yeah and then using the uh the a2 uh pistol grip that either if it fits your hand great if it doesn't you're like god damn what is this lump here for mm -hmm. yeah so i never, I never minded it I yeah didn't use it all some guys much. really bug them get bugged by them and you know end up filing that off um but or replacing it these days you can replace it back then yeah uh, you have the choice between the uh, the a1 and the a2 and that was yeah pretty much it pretty much you know? Woo modifications right guys were heat gunning them and doing kind of some custom stuff a little bit here and there but by the time i got around there were other options yeah a lot of uh soldering iron stippling going on yeah. in the cages you're like oh yeah look at this this is cool i'm like I don't know. So it was kind of in that early to mid 2000s when I was coming in, when you really started to see, I mean, just the private sector take off with more options, more options for grips um, and butt stocks. Obviously we were living in the 900 series M4 world. So you had your, still had your A2 pistol grip and you had this kind of M4 specific um, butt stock, you know, a little mm. bit beefier, a little bit more robust than the, uh, what it replaced, which is that really small one. Yeah, the real small which one. Which I like. Which, yeah, I mean, it's fine. It's, um, I mean, it, it works, guys. I mean, yeah, if that's what you got, you know, it works, it still works. Yeah, and so as I was coming in, the LMT crane butt stock was pretty much standardized. Mm. And then we had a, there was a company known as CQD or close quarter defense. So you had CQB, close quarter battle. You had CQC, close quarter combat. And then of course we had to have CQD, which was our close quarter defense, which was kind of a hybrid hand-to-hand -hand yeah. armed fighting system. That was his, you know, his trademark yeah. name was CQD. So. Yeah, interesting enough, there was no CQA, you know, <laughs> close quarter attack <laughs> or assault. That didn't really go anywhere, yeah. but yeah. anyway, um, CQD, so here is a CQD foregrip. It is made of aluminum. It's got kind of a pointy end here, and this was designed to just mount onto your weapon system so that you could muzzle strike and just be as physical as you needed to and not have to worry about a plastic grip breaking off because before this, um, really all there was, as far as I know, were these Gen 1 Reed Knight grips. Yeah, that was the next one up. And so, then when this crank came out, this one's got innovative things like uh you know get your little waterproof uh you know container there in the mm -hmm. in, in the butt and it's got a spot to put your pressure pad and even a place to to run the wire you know so it, it was fairly well thought out but it's aluminum and aluminum gets hot yeah so you know it's also it was really robust as well so if you went to you know smash somebody in the face with this um maybe you're you're uh yeah just not this thing just this would break do... off well yeah. when you put this on here now the whole bottom end of this would just come off because that there's this bottom plate is one piece and yeah you hit somebody hard enough so we had guys uh that were just throwing all kinds of tape and stuff around here to hold their uh their slip ring down to lock it in even even tighter <laughs> so that was that was the issue with that you know it's, you, there's no free lunch guys you got to figure out where in that chain you have uh issues and then fix mm -hmm. them things were evolving yeah um, you talked about this thing getting hot i remember uh somebody put one of these on a mark 46 and i didn't think much of it 
And then I ended up actually getting to shoot that Mark 46 and I could feel it warming up. Yeah. Belt feds, that's the yeah, definition. Like, it slowly warm, was man. warming up. I was like, man, I'm glad I'm wearing gloves. And then eventually the gloves were not enough. And I just remember having this like super hot. <laughs> you needed an oven mitt. In already Canada. a dangerous situation. <laughs> and now I've got this freaking super hot grip. Oh man, it was an interesting night. But uh, I took it off and um, immediately replaced it with one of these. This is a Tango Down foregrip. Um, started seeing these around the time I came in, and they were originally purchased for machine guns. Yeah, so I was at Warcom, mm -hmm. when, and I, I was the guy who purchased these for the machine guns. Okay. Uh, I said, yeah, that's, that's exactly what we need. And then uh, when we shipped them out, uh, guys grabbed them and just put them on their uh, m Yeah, so the idea was to have the aluminum super nasty one. The, on your M4, which, I mean, of course, it was total overkill. Not everybody got one of those, anyway. You don't see a lot of those around. Um, I, I, in the mid-2000s, I think every single guy that I worked with had one on their 10-inch. Okay, we had, we had evolved past that at yeah. pretty quick. Yeah. I remember seeing, in fact, that one's from there, but nobody ran with this. No, CQD was the law of the land yeah. uh, when I first came in. I actually worked directly with... Uh, Dieter came out and worked with my troop a couple of times. Linked my first two mm -hmm. workups. He's a cool guy. Yeah, I worked with him too. This um, one here is the original. Has the yeah. uh, the Surefire little pad on there, and then the Gen Two had the the bigger. Uh, uh, yeah, it came with uh, the zip ties already in it. Because you take these zip ties if you didn't have the little keys that they came with, and you could stick the zip ties into these holes. Just made it a whole lot easier. Yeah, to, and that's how you got it on and off the rail. Otherwise, you'd be sitting there trying to hold all four of them down. It didn't work. The reason that they're zip ties, once you got it on there, and this this would these uh, bars popped up into the uh, mm -hmm. into the uh, notches, and then you would take and you'd throw the you'd zip tie through here, and fucking zip tie them down so that they wouldn't they wouldn't uh, flex and come up. Hmm. Yeah, I never. So, uh, well, I mean, because you'd have you'd have. Uh, Oh, your wire coming off of here, mm -hmm. going up to something. So you'd throw a zip tie through there to hold the wire down, and that helped hold the. Uh, so did Tango the Down send up. these with the zip ties in there? Or did Warcom put have those? I'm, put I'm in? sure the zip ties came with them okay. to you know secure your wires. I don't yeah. remember exactly. Uh, and then I bugged them and said, you know, hey, can you make this thing shorter? Because I was thinking about a shotgun, mm -hmm. you know. So I want you know, put on my shorty shotgun. So, yeah, no problem. So they made this one. Uh, first, they made it uh, just standard, and then they made the uh, the quick release one, so you could just clamp that sucker on there. Uh, you know, there's no real reason to quick release your your uh, foregrip, but hey, it's a big seller, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think they sell way more of these than they uh, they sell the full size size ones now. So it's it's popular. It's you know, you got just enough to grab on there without being too, you know, bulky. Uh -huh. And then. Uh, the first aftermarket pistol grip I ever used, the team bought everybody these Hogue grips. Um, this is an original one that I had. It even has old spray paint on it from a spray paint job. See, on one spray of paint guns. lasts. Yeah. <laughs> and I used these uh, probably for my first two deployments. I still have a few of them laying around. I found this one uh, in the garage. And that probably took us out to about 2008. And then somewhere in that late 2000s, that's where things really, really started to take off. Yeah, I mean, that was, Hogue, you know, they make aftermarket parts and they mm -hmm. make good stuff. I mean, some guys really love these, some guys were like, oh no, it's rubber, I hate it, whatever, or their fingers didn't fit the group. This was perfect for me. Mm -hmm. um, I ran this on, on all my guns, pretty much, uh, you know, while I was operating. That's the first thing I'd swap out. Yeah, and as we got farther into the 2000s, you started to see things actually being purpose-built in tan. You didn't have to spray paint everything. You didn't have to, you know, dye everything. You weren't constantly trying to cover up the the, the blackness. Black, the blackness. So, yeah, you started to see. Um, I think probably by my second go, more and more actual plastic, you know, brown the stuff, tan, tan stuff. Busting. This is, again is a Lewis machine tool, uh, Sop Mod stock. They killed it with this thing. It actually has yeah. battery compartments in it yeah. um, that I don't think anyone ever used. But the idea is you could stick, uh, yeah. oh no, it actually fully yeah, came out. Shoot, so, like I said, I never used it. But um, <laughs> you could pull this out. You could stick your one, two, three, or your double A's down in here. Um, definitely double A's. I think the later ones, you could actually you know, get into it. This one, you had, pretty much had to pull this 
off your, the damn stock in order to get to them because they're a pain in the ass to get out, right? But uh, later versions of other people figured out that, well, if you just put it back here, you, you don't have to take the damn stock off. So, okay. you know. They, yeah, they were, they were learning. Evolving. That's what we do here. You know, we evolve. Constantly evolving. Uh, um, and then... Well, back to your, the foregrips, the angle foregrip. Uh, yeah, well, the became, Magpul you know, stuff, that's oh, when it well, started yeah. coming out. I don't... Magpul was the next one. I mean, the, the company yeah. that, that starts off with, uh, hey, how do I get this magazine out easier rather than throwing a little dog ear of tape on there? Mm -hmm. oh, I could put that little, you know, little thing, a little attach that on there. Yeah, they literally started with Magpuls, which yeah. was furniture for your mag. And then eventually they started making furniture for the yeah. whole weapon system. We got an offering here of some of their stuff. Have these smaller CTR stock. These are kind of their standard, kind of a return to the smaller profile these came out first yep. and then if you like nice the, lightweight yeah. that was the issue with these They're, they you add a little more there's a few more ounces here than than there would yeah, be than there know. was so. but if you liked the cheek weld if you just liked the way it was because that's what you came up with you know they obviously offer that as well this one's the acs and you know they last these ones are brand new out of the box but i have other ones and um you know they work you know this one even has again has a battery compartment or ear pro or you know, maybe a picture of your sweetheart. I don't know. Directions on how to get back to your house. Whatever you need. <laughs> Whatever you need. Yeah, little nice little compartment. Yeah, bears. Skittle. Yeah. There you go. Put them in there. there. Yeah. I'm a gummy bears guy. Snack on, on target. And then they came out with, they do have four grips. I have used their four grips a little bit, but there's so many of these laying around the team that we still just use those. But then obviously the angle four grips started coming out. Yeah. You know? I like a four. I like a grip, but not too much grip. The four grip is too much grip. Maybe like a maybe like a two or a three. I don't know what that means, but yeah. they came out with this one. This is the uh, I think this one's the AFG. Uh, yeah. I never really angle four grip. That's, yeah, AFG that's two. A, I think that's Gen two. The Gen one was a lot bigger. It's a lot bigger. Um, yeah. I think but, I have. I think that's the one I actually use. And yeah. then I have this smaller one that I'll put on something else. But yeah, the angle four grips are cool. Um, you can put them on AR pistols or. Yeah, that's the the only thing I have them on now is. AR pistols pretty much because mm -hmm. uh, I like I like a foregrip you know I think mm -hmm. it's more versatile for me mm -hmm. um, and then it, you know one thing you can do with a foregrip that you can't do with that angle foregrip is you can just grip this down here and place your hand down now I've got a little monopod right I, I got some support there and the gun's not just bouncing off from one hard point to another hard point and get, get your hand in there it's not quite a bipod, but it, it'll give you a nice stable uh, shooting position. Whereas that, uh, yeah. And also from a CQB perspective, like having a grip, you know, it just brings so many more muscle yeah, groups and one. strength. Gotta, yeah, but without it, you know, you're trying to muscle strike, oh, yeah. you're trying to fight. Um, you know, if I were to grab onto this thing with you holding it, it's going to be a lot harder to take it away from a guy that has a pistol grip versus somebody who's just holding on to a forend. I mean, if you can actually pick up your your carbine or whatever you have and and think about it if somebody were to get a hold of this and start wrestling it away i'm this is much more formidable much harder to deal with from an attacker standpoint and from a cqb perspective i really like the foregrip as well um I, you know you can't just it's not a video game real life's not a video game you can't just shoot everybody every time everywhere you go yeah. Um, you're going to be marshalling people. You're going to be getting into scuffles. You're going to be, and people are just naturally going to be afraid of you. It is a scary situation, especially in low light environments. And you just need to be able to handle them, you know, minimize them. You, you need to give them some encouragement without knowing the language. Exactly. Okay. Those yeah. nonverbal cues. Yeah, yeah. And Those just, they go just, a long way. Point They're universal. Universal. one thing. I mean, you're tapping them with it. Oh. Yeah, that gets their attention. Might break them out of that, you know, oh mm -hmm. crap, I'm in shock, you know, what, what am I doing? I'm gonna just freeze up, you know? They're not being, you know, belligerent, but they're not doing what you tell them to do and you got a job to do, so. Right. You know. and then, then also with the foregrips, um, if you're ever in like a heavily wooded or, you know, a lot of veg, these do get caught up on things. They do kind of get in the way. It's an extra point to um, stick there, out there. There were a few guys in the Vietnam era that actually were mounting spare pistol grips onto their forends wasn't very popular but guys did do it yeah um well the, the 60 gunners so you know they take pieces of pipe and clamp them onto the yeah. gas tube you know is that that was their idea yeah just hose grip. clamps yeah yeah clamp stuff on there and it, it for full auto fire on a dubs it does make a huge difference i remember 
getting to shoot the 4360s that had the built-in foregrip, mm -hmm. and then the 46s for training didn't have any furniture. So you were having to shoot the 46 without anything, and oh man, I was out of giving anything just to get my hands on anything. Even just a little one like this would have made all the difference in the world, but it's okay, eventually we got them. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then these days, I mean, we move on with this company here. This is uh, medieval, and these guys, you know, you can adjust this. It'll flop mm -hmm. around, whatever you know. You can. Yeah, for recce rifles, for our designated um, marksman sniper rifles, these definitely come in handy, being able to keep them out of the way, bring them down. Uh, not only in the front foregrip area, but also some butt stocks have rail, so you can reach back and yeah. lock in, but that's for, you know, very static long range shooting. Yeah, that's more for your sniper guys. Yeah, I, I mess with that your, stuff your a little bit. Uh, more uh, purpose built. I think this one's, you know, you can adjust the size of it. Mm. And, you know, there's, ah, yeah, innovations, man. You know, yeah. people come out with stuff and. Uh, and for, but for that sniper rifle roll though, I really like the AFGs and these kind of, you know, half ass foregrips. Again, um, this can be kind of a, you know, for a rifleman, kind of improvised shooting, that's good. You, know, you can use your hand as a extension, but if you're gonna really set up a you know, final firing position, this kind of stuff, especially in an urban environment, kind of gets in the way. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, just being able to, that's why we have the quick disconnects now. You can be able to pop stuff in and out off of the weapon systems, put them in your kit, switch things out on the go if you needed to. I mean, they've really come out with just so much stuff, it's hard to keep track of. There's so many brands out there. And I think the big takeaway from this video is it's all personal preference. I have M16A1 pistol grips on some of my guns, A2 pistol grips on some of my guns, Magpul, Hogue. Not uh, everybody out down. there has a big box of extra crap yeah, in their Yeah, and garage. I'm telling you, the pistol grip is by far the least important to me. Like, as long as it's there, like the, the M16A1 pistol grip, yeah. I don't care. Like it just works. I think the um, what's on the fore end and definitely the buttstock is more important. But again, I have all the old buttstocks as well. I have a lot of the new ones, yeah. and um, I like being able to switch back and forth from the old stuff, the new stuff. I like trying new you know, the new new stuff. I like trying for the first time. As long as you know what you're doing, you should be able to make it work. You know, it really comes down to just personal preference. Yeah, and you know, the, the modularity these days, so this was the first, uh, you know, the, the rail. This was like the Mark One motto. That's what started things off. And then somebody looked at that and went, you know what? There's a lot of rail space on there that's not being used. Is there a way we can cut more weight? And that's always, you're always looking a way to cut weight. You mm -hmm. want to add capability and cut take weight. off weight, you know, or if you add that capability, People talk about the M5, the, the new XM5. Oh, it weighs as much as M14. Yeah, but it does a lot more, okay? You, know, you put that optic on there, it, there's a, just a lot more capability that you can get out of, the, out of the, the platform for the same amount of weight. And that doesn't happen unless you reduce weight somewhere. So this, when we started reducing weight, uh, I don't have, well, we got this one right here. This is our just uh, aftermarket type of deal. But yeah. the uh, example here is, M lock. They went the key mod, then M lock, and initially you had you could take and just put on pieces of rail that you would then you know you put the piece of rail on your M lock, uh, the little openings here, and then you could attach whatever you want to the rail. So you had that backwards compatibility. Now more more companies are making stuff that just attaches straight to the M lock. So you got flashlight mounts and lasers and everything else that just goes straight to M lock. Okay, pluses and minuses. It's nice and light, but it's also now my hand is a whole lot closer to that barrel when it heats up. So, you know, you almost need some sort of vertical foregrip to get your hand away from that sucker when uh, when it starts heating up. Well, who made all this furniture? So this is a perfect example of just how crazy the yeah. furniture has gotten. Yeah, Boyd's makes the uh, the the wood stock for you know. I don't have many fancy guns, but mm -hmm. you know, I saw this. And, oh, yeah, I like wood. So, we got this one from Boyd's. Um, you know, this is a composite pistol grip. So it's basically sawdust compressed with epoxy, I guess. I uh, forget who makes that one, but yeah, it's decent. And then, you know, all the other stuff, you know, there's so many aftermarket uh, companies out there that are making good stuff. It's unlimited these days, man. You know, you pick what you want and go with it. You can go fancy. Or you can go just your basic stuff. You know, it, it works. If it, mm -hmm. if you're looking for a work gun, all any of this will work. 
You know, if you want to get fancy, uh, you can pay a little extra, you know, but, you know, you show stuff off at the range. Whatever that second kind of type of cool is that you're, uh, you're looking for. Yeah, exactly. It all comes down to really guys' personal preference. What works for you is what's going to work. I mean, don't be afraid to try new things because we've tried quite a bit of it. And uh, when it comes to actually using this stuff for any real purpose, it doesn't matter. Yeah, work mm. gun's a work gun. As long as, you, mm. as, long as it's uh, strong enough, you need to have mm -hmm. that robustness. So, you know, yeah. A lot of the, you, you fall into this trap where, you know, airsoft guys love you, but some of your gear, man, it looks, it looks the part, but it's not made for that heavy use. So, mm -hmm. yeah, be careful, buyer beware when it comes to that. Um, I would stick with a name brand when it comes down to uh, yeah, anything that you're going to use that, that might save your life. Alrighty. Yeah. Well, hey guys, if you if you like this content, man, uh, you know, tell us, you know, if you got a, a cool setup that you that you got or you know whatever you need, man, leave us a comment. You know, like, subscribe, you know what to do. Yeah, guys, definitely hit us up in the comments. Let us know what works for you. This is some of the stuff that worked for us. And this is Dor and Coach. And we'll catch you next time.